Laser weapons used to be a sci-fi prop. Now they're a line item in defense budgets, and not a small one. The U.S. alone has poured over $7 billion into directed energy programs since 2017, including hundreds of millions on Air Force attempts to bolt a beam onto fighter jets. Over the last 12 months, the Navy fired a laser off a destroyer and melted a drone. Israel is about to field one that vaporizes rockets for a few dollars a shot. China just rolled out a 250-kilowatt laser turret. Russia claims it can blind satellites in orbit. It's happening right now. And while the missiles still roar, the next wave of weapons is nearly silent. Let's break down the new laser arms race. Who's building what? What it can actually do? And why everyone suddenly cares? Helios. The first laser that actually works. The US military has talked about lasers for decades. Helios is the first one to actually fire from a warship and prove it works. In 2024, the Navy installed a 60-kilowatt laser on the USS Preble, an Arleigh Burke-class destroyer, and used it to shoot down a drone during live fire testing. The system is integrated directly into the ship's Aegis combat system, meaning it works alongside radar and existing weapons. Lockheed Martin delivered the unit in late 2022, and it replaced the ship's forward phalanx gun. Helio stands for High Energy Laser with Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance. It combines three functions, a laser to disable physical targets, a dazzler to blind enemy sensors, and long-range cameras for tracking and surveillance. The current setup delivers 60 kilowatts with the ability to scale to 120 kilowatts by adding more modules. That puts it in the right range to take down drones, disable small boats, and potentially damage incoming rockets or cruise missiles at short range. Ships were the obvious starting point. They already have the power generation and space needed to support a laser system, and they're dealing with the right kind of threats. Since 2023, U.S. Navy ships in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden have faced drone attacks, including one-way UAVs and explosive boats. Traditional interceptors work, but they're expensive, and every shot counts. A laser helps cover low-cost threats with a low-cost response. That's why the Navy wants it. Each laser shot costs only electricity and the magazine never runs out. As Vice Admiral Brendan McLean said, it's about saving missiles for when you really need them. Lasers don't replace anything, they fill a gap. Helios is still in prototype deployment and the Navy is continuing to test performance. Alongside Helios, the fleet also operates the 150 kilowatt LWSD laser weapon system demonstrator on the USS Portland and ODIN dazzlers on eight other destroyers. But expectations are higher. The Department of Defense spends close to $1 billion a year on directed energy weapons. The Navy wants systems that are field ready, not just functional. Helios is the best step so far. And if it holds up, it sets the stage for next-gen laser systems across the board, from ships to fighter jets and beyond shield and the laser that didn't fly. Mounting a laser on a ship is one thing. Getting one to work on a fighter jet? That's been a lot harder. The US Air Force's main push was a project called SHIELD, short for Self-Protect High Energy Laser Demonstrator. The idea was simple on paper. Mount a laser pod on an F-15 and use it to shoot down incoming missiles. From 2016 to 2022, the program made solid progress. A ground-based version of the system successfully took out multiple test targets. Lockheed Martin built the laser, known as Lance, estimated at 30 to 50 kilowatts. Northrop Grumman handled the beam control, and Boeing designed the flight pod. All three components were delivered, but none of them made it onto a plane. In May 2024, the Air Force ended the program without conducting any airborne tests. The issue wasn't the laser itself. It was the platform. Fighter jets don't have spare room, spare power, or spare cooling. Mounting even a 50 kilowatt laser on a fast moving aircraft requires around 250 kilowatts of onboard electrical capacity, plus thermal systems to keep it from overheating. That just doesn't exist on current jets. A similar effort to put a high energy laser on an AC 130J gunship was also canceled in early 2024. Different aircraft, same problem. SHIELD was funded at around $210 million total. It worked on the ground, but in the air, it hit limits the current generation can't solve. Still, the work wasn't wasted. The tech is now feeding into future platforms and especially sixth-generation fighters. 
The Air Force's NGAD and the Navy's F-A-XX programs are being built with directed energy in mind. They're expected to have the electrical power, thermal capacity, and design layout needed to support lasers from day one. That includes defense against missiles and drones, as well as sensor blinding, possibly even anti-satellite roles. Airborne lasers aren't off the table. They're just waiting on jets that can handle them. The U.S. isn't building lasers in a vacuum. Other countries are moving fast, some toward real-world deployment, others toward public flexing. Israel, Iron Beam. Out of everyone, Israel is closest to actually fielding a laser weapon. Their system, Iron Beam, is a high-energy air defense laser designed by Raphael and Elbit Systems. Rated between 100 and 150 kilowatts, it's built for short-range threats, rockets, mortars, and drones. The kind of low-cost, high-volume attacks Israel deals with constantly. In 2025 tests, Iron Beam took out rockets, UAVs, and even small missiles, burning through targets in seconds. It plugs into the existing Iron Dome system. Same radar, same command post, and fires for about $2 per shot. That's not a slogan. That's what Israeli defense officials put on paper. Compared to a Tamir missile, roughly $50,000 to $100,000, the cost per kill advantage is massive, especially during saturation attacks. It has an estimated range of 10 kilometers and includes adaptive optics to compensate for haze, dust, and heat shimmer. The everyday enemies of beam weapons. Engineers worked specifically to make it reliable in Israel's climate. Deployment is expected before the end of 2025. Beyond that, Israel is also developing mobile versions for use on armored vehicles and exploring airborne laser concepts. China, Silent Hunter, and LY-1 China is chasing speed and scale. Their early system, Silent Hunter, is a 30-kilowatt fiber laser mounted on a truck. Built by Poly Technologies, it was first designed for export and found buyers. In 2024, Saudi Arabia used Silent Hunter to shoot down a Houthi drone targeting energy infrastructure. Chinese sources claim Silent Hunter can penetrate 5 millimeters of steel at 1 kilometer. It's been shown at trade expos and air shows, and adopted by the PLA for air-based defense. Its mobility and short setup time make it ideal for anti-drone duties in fixed locations. But the real headline came in late 2025, when China revealed a much larger system, the LY-1. This one's ship-mounted, a rotating laser turret reportedly rated between 180 and 250 kilowatts. If true, that would make it the most powerful naval laser publicly shown to date. LY-1 was first rolled out during a Beijing military parade. It's since been seen on both 8x8 trucks and aboard a Type 071 amphibious ship. Chinese officials describe it as a point defense layer, designed to intercept drones and missiles that slip past long-range interceptors. The system's aperture is large, nearly twice the diameter of the Helios lens, suggesting good beam quality and range. But so far, there's no public footage of LY-1 hitting a live target, at sea or on land. No performance data on sustained firing or thermal control. And no sign yet that it's been integrated into real fleet deployments. The specs look strong. The delivery looks polished. But until LY-1 fires in real-world maritime conditions, salt spray, humidity, power fluctuations, its status stays in the claimed but unproven column. Russia, Parasvet, and Zadira. Russia's approach to lasers leans more strategic. Their flagship system is Parasvet, a mobile blinding laser aimed not at drones or missiles, but at satellites. First shown in 2018, Parasvet has reportedly been deployed near ICBM bases to dazzle or disable satellite sensors, especially those that might track nuclear force movements. Officials claim it can affect optics on satellites up to 1,500 kilometers away, though no public demonstration has ever backed that up. It's built into a truck-based platform and seems designed to work alongside early warning radars and mobile missile systems. It doesn't destroy targets, it blinds them, at least that's the theory. In 2022, Russian officials also announced a tactical system called Zadira, designed to shoot down drones. They claimed it could burn through a UAV in 5 seconds at 5 kilometers, and said prototypes were already in use during the Ukraine conflict. There's been no confirmed footage or third-party verification. Ukrainian officials mocked the announcement, 
calling it a rehash of World War II-era miracle weapon PR. While there were a few reports of eye injuries from suspected dazzlers, nothing points to widespread battlefield use or any major operational impact. Lasers still have problems, and that's exactly why they matter. All the flashy demos and billion-dollar contracts don't change one thing. Lasers are still hard to get right. The physics is brutal, the engineering is messy, and real-world performance depends on more than just power numbers. Power is the first barrier. A laser strong enough to take down drones or missiles, say 100 to 150 kilowatts, needs a serious power supply. That's why ships came first. Destroyers like the USS Preble already generate enough electricity to run radar, propulsion, and weapon systems. Adding a laser is tough, but not impossible. Jets are a different story. The SHIELD program never made it to flight tests because the math didn't work. A modern fighter doesn't have the spare power or thermal capacity to handle even a 50 kilowatt beam. Engineers estimate you'd need at least 250 kilowatts on board just to run the pod. And that doesn't include cooling or beam control. Cooling is the second wall. Lasers generate heat fast. Too much, and the optics degrade. Most systems need time to recharge between shots or risk burning themselves out. Even Iron Beam, tested in the open desert, had to be tuned for wind, dust, and heat shimmer. Rain, fog, or humidity can scatter the beam. And nobody's made one that works perfectly in bad weather. Durability is next. Military lasers have to work through smoke, dirt, salt, and grime. Shipboard systems like LY-1 look powerful on paper, up to 250 kilowatts according to Chinese sources, but we haven't seen how they perform after 5 minutes of ocean spray. Beam quality drops fast when lenses are dirty, and you don't get a break to wipe them mid-battle. So with all those headaches, why bother? Because lasers are still cheap, and that's the part militaries care about most. A single Patriot interceptor costs up to $4 million. A Tamir missile, Iron Dome, is $50,000 to $100,000. Laser shot? Around $1 to $10, depending on system size and local power. It's not a fair fight. Lasers don't run out of ammo. They don't need reloads. They fire as long as they have power, making them ideal for shooting down waves of drones, loitering munitions, or cheap rocket barrages. They're not replacing missiles. They're making sure we don't waste them. That's why the Pentagon has poured over $7 billion into directed energy programs since 2017. It's why Israel is deploying Iron Beam now, and it's why China's rolling out new models faster than it can finish public tests. Lasers don't win with hype, they win with cost per kill. And in an era of cheap drones and saturation strikes, that's enough to make them the most practical, experimental weapon on the table. They can't do everything, but they don't have to. They just have to fry a drone, save a million bucks, and do it again. So if you're into lasers that actually work, budgets that actually cry, and future tech that sometimes sets itself on fire, hit subscribe, smash the like, and stick around. Because the future's looking bright, literally.